Mark chapter 6. Mark 6 and 45. Bible says, and Jesus, for he saw them toiling and rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them. Let me back up to 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Notice verse 51. And he went up into them, into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. I want to use this for a thought tonight. The wind will stop. The wind will stop. God bless you. You may be seated. I think probably every preacher in the universe has preached from this text several times. I know I've used it several times and preached it and taught about it. Uh, and y'all really, when you think about it, Jesus loves to help those who are hurting and going through storms in their lives. And we all wonder about our own storms when the wind is blowing everything around. We wonder sometimes, well, Lord, is there going to be anything left when the wind quits blowing? <coughs> will, there any, will, will there be anything salvageable after the wind stops? Y'all yeah. know we all have storms in our lives, and sometimes you look at it and you, you honestly wonder, God is... is Am I, am I going to have any kids left? Am I, am I going to have a house left? Am I going to have, you know, we, we wonder about, is, is anything going to be left after the storm quits blowing, the wind quits blowing? This particular day, the disciples had watched Jesus feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. And it was probably more like fifteen to 20,000 counting wives and children. But immediately following this great miracle, the Bible states that evening is approaching fast and Jesus sends his disciples away by boat to go to the other side. But I want you to notice in verse 45 how Jesus sent his disciples away. The Bible says he constrained his disciples. Constrain here means to drive or to force. Have you ever tried to get somebody to do something when they didn't want to do it? You know, it, it, it's kind of hard sometimes. You ever tried to just want to get rid of somebody? Like, you know, kids. Now, you're, you're trying to usher them off and you've got plans and you want to get them out of the house or you, you're trying to get them, somebody's come to pick them up and you, you're hurriedly trying to get them in, in the car, you know, because you've got plans. Jesus is wanting his disciples to go on a, uh, on a boat trip. And uh, he constrained his disciples. It means to drive or to force. They didn't want to go, so maybe Jesus just kind of nudged them along and pushed them along a little bit to help them. You know, he might have said, hurry along now, it's, it's getting dark, and you know, you need to get on. You know, the thing about God is, he already knows what's going to happen on the journey. He already knew the storm was going to come up on the sea. He already knew that the wind was coming. In fact, no doubt, if you, if you really want to think about it, he planned it. Wow. 
What all of us need to remember tonight is when we face the storms and we face the strong wind that knocks us off of our feet, the truth is God is behind it all. Yeah. And sometimes you, you just really have to wonder about it, don't you? Wow. God is behind this. There's got to be a purpose. If we would look at everything in our life and realize that it has a purpose. It, it didn't just happen. It's not an accident. It happened for a reason. Um, when you think about it, it, the storms and the wind right now, we, we've got storms and winds blowing right now in our life. And, and the Lord allows it. Some people have problems with that, that line of thinking. But I want to remind you, if just one area of our lives is outside of His control, we are in serious trouble. Everything, everything that goes on, the Lord has it in control. He's even changing things for our good, didn't He? Amen. Um, If Satan, if the world, or this flesh is able to disrupt my life apart from the permission of God, then no part of my life is safe. But I believe with all my heart, God is in complete control. Amen. How many of you remember putting your, your child on the school bus for the first time? I just think back, maybe a few years back. How many of y'all cried when you put your kids on the bus for the first time? What? <laughs> Some of you have not been saying, oh, thank God they're leaving. <laughs> Get them out of it. Y'all been used to them maybe like Jesus, kind of ushering them along a little bit. Um, but there may have been some of you that were reluctant. Uh, they may have even turned around and looked at you. Maybe you put your hand on their back and, and you kind of ushered them up the steps. And you wanted them to hurry because maybe you were about to cry and you didn't want them to know that you were crying. You knew they were going to sit close to the wind and wave at you. And you knew you had to be strong and wave back to them. And you know, thinking about all of that, you think about the first day of school and putting your kid on that bus. You know, you think, well, I know I need to do this, but I really don't want to do it. I know I need to put them on that bus, but I really don't want It's hard, isn't it? But do you want your kids to be smart? Yeah. You know they need an education, don't you? Jesus ushered those disciples into that boat, into that boat because he was sending them to school. Amen. He knew the storm was coming. He knew the wind was going to blow. He knew the waves were going to, to almost capsize the boat. But the Bible says in verse 48 that he saw them even in their toiling, in their rowing. He saw them. Although Jesus was busy praying about matters of eternity, he was still watching his <laughs> disciples with all of their problems. Y'all, let me tell you something. He sees you in your rowing. He sees you in your toiling. He may be praying, but he sees everything that you're doing. And he saw them toiling. The word means torture. They were being tortured in their rowing. These men were in unbelievable stress as they labored against the sea. Notice the Bible says in verse 48, even the wind was contrary unto them. They were fighting for their lives, and Jesus saw it all. He knew their condition. He knew what they were facing. And he cared for their safety. Listen to me. Don't you ever think that God don't see you. Amen. 
Don't ever think that God don't see the winds that's blowing against you, the, the turmoil that's going on. He sees that trial you're going through. He sees your condition. He knows how much strength you have. And He knows how much you're rowing. And He knows just exactly the right time to come along. He knows when to help you. And He's moved by the storms and the winds that are called that we are called on to face in our life. Yeah, Jesus was in the mountains praying. He was praying about the direction of his ministry, but I'm also convinced that he saw and was praying for his disciples' faith. Lord, give them faith. I believe he was praying. They need faith. That they've, they've seen, Lord, they, they've seen me do some miracles, but they need more faith. How many of y'all think you could use some more faith? Isn't it amazing? You can see God do some fantastic things and, and then all of a sudden your faith gets weak because another storm comes into your life and you, had, you haven't seen God work in that behalf before and all of a sudden you get nervous and jittery and you're wondering, well, God, can you do this? Church, I want to tell you, you have not been abandoned just because God sends you to school. No more than your kids have been abandoned because you send them to school. They went to school to learn a lesson. You haven't abandoned them. And the Lord sends us to school so we can learn some things. He hadn't quit on us. He hadn't quit loving us. Just because you send your kids off to school don't mean you quit loving them. Yeah, they're going to meet all kinds of stuff at school. Come on now. They're going to see all kinds of situations at school. But I want you to notice that the Lord Himself is praying for you. <laughs> Woo. Just like Mama's praying for the kids while they're at school, Jesus is praying for us when He sends us to school. There's nothing coming up that He don't know about. He's praying, God, let them get the Lord have mercy. Hey, wait just a minute. Y'all remember what He told Simon Peter? He told Simon, the devil wants to sift you as wheat. Now, the sifting process has to do with wind. The way I understood it, they took the wheat and they would, they would, they would lift it up and in the air like this, big gobs of it, maybe a basket full of it, and they'd throw it up into the strong wind. And the wind would blow away all the bad stuff and the good stuff, the heavier stuff, would fall onto uh, whatever they were trying to save it in. Maybe it was a big tarp or uh, a big cloth that spread on the ground or something. He wasn't afraid of the wind because the wind was going to blow all the bad stuff away. Could I just ask you tonight, do you think it's possible that God sends us in the storm sometimes so that the wind will blow off all the stuff we don't need? Woo. He sends us to school to get rid of that stuff that we don't need sometimes. Amen. Now, there's some stuff that we're going to learn in school. And some, have y'all ever heard garbage in, garbage out? Some of that stuff's going to come in and it's going, to, it's going to leave us, but there's some good stuff that's going to stick and we need to stick with those things. We have not been abandoned because the Lord Himself is praying for us. Romans 8, 34 says, He is at the right hand of God making intercession for you. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Wherefore He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make what? intercession for them. Praise God. He's praying for us. God don't send you into the wind adversity to see you die. He don't send your kids to school because you don't want to see them struggle. You, you know they're going to struggle. You know they're going to have hard times at school. You don't send them because you want peace and quiet. You send them because they need to go get an education. And yeah, the storm's going to come and the wind's going to blow. But they're also going to grow. And you are going to grow in your faith when you go through some storms. I mean, y'all like storms and wind. Now, I know some people that hate thunder, lightning. I ain't going to call no names. They might have on orange, but... Uh. <coughs> Yeah, we ain't going to call no names, but I'm here to tell you that there's times when you're afraid of storms. You're afraid of the wind, amen? But I'm here to tell you that God says, I am going to be with you. 
Can I show you another side of this story? When we read this story, we see Jesus, we see the disciples, and we see the storm. But I see a parallel of the bride of Christ as she waits for the bridegroom. Just as Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship, every person who is part of the bride of Christ was compelled at one time to come to Jesus. Nobody is saved today because they made a decision to come to God. If you're saved, it's because God made a decision to choose you. Amen. He came to you in your dead, lost condition because he saw something in you that he could use for his glory. He put you in that good old gospel ship. Woo. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in that good old gospel <coughs> ship and I'm going far beyond the sky. Well, I'm going to shout and sing until the praises ring for I'm bidding this world goodbye. Woo! Yeah. He put you on that good old gospel ship and his plan is to send you to the other side called heaven. Amen. Yes. We are headed to a home of peace and rest and beauty like the eye has never seen. But every which way we turn, we're under attack, it seems. Amen. The storms rage. The wind blows. Y'all, do you understand that Christianity is under attack? Yes. The devil wants to do everything he can to keep us from reaching our destination. We may be in the ship, but he's trying to get us out of the ship. We may be on our journey toward heaven, but he's trying to stop the boat. He would like to turn it over. He would like to disrupt our trip. He would like to cause all kinds of storms and winds in our life. But I'm telling you, one day the wind's going to stop. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Lord have mercy. We can't wait for that day when the wind stops. It's great when the storm passes over, isn't it? Yes. Wow. This world is, uh, you know, when you think about the world, the world's really not attacking <laughs> Islam. The world is not attacking Buddhism. The world is attacking the bride of Christ. Because the bride is the threat to the world. Amen. The world hates Jesus because his way causes people to love one another. Amen. His way rejects sin and sinful ways. They hate Jesus because Christianity demands total, uh, a total break with sin. The world won't ever accept that because Satan is the god of this earthly kingdom called the world. The bride us can expect some very windy days because Satan would like to stop the ship. He'd like to keep us from getting to our destination. But I tell you, God on the, on the same hand is just building our faith through every storm, every wind that comes, every, every high wave that comes our way. We say, oh, we made it through that one. Thank God. Oh, Lord, I, I, Lord, don't let another one come today. But if it does come, Lord, give me... Give me what I need to get through it. Oh, Lord. God, give me strength to climb those mountains that's in my way. I can tell you this. Our struggle does not go unnoticed. Amen. Our Lord Jesus sees everything we face. And some days, he just steps on the scene and he stops the wind. So that we can have some times of peace. But there is a time coming when the wind will stop blowing for good. The day that he transport us to heaven, there will be no more storms, no more wind, no more suffering, no more pain. I thank God that there is a remnant of people who know that one day the wind is going to stop blowing. Jesus said this, and I think it applies wherever we are, not just at church. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. You can be in your car, two or three gathered together. You can be on your job, two or three gathered together. You can be at the grocery store, two or three gathered together. Come on. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, you can be together in his name in a lot of places. Didn't say you had to be at church. 
Oh, Brother Grace, I'm glad you said that. I don't want to church no more. You need church. You need church. I need church. Listen, let me just tell you, it doesn't take a multitude to get God to show up. It just takes one or two. Sometimes it takes 10 or 11 disciples and God shows up. Sometimes it just takes you alone in your storm and God shows up. It just takes a few who are needing God to show up in power to calm their storm. I want to make mention of three things before I go on. And I am hurrying. A, our God has the power to calm His church in troubled times. Amen? B, He has power to come for His church and deliver them from the storm. Amen? C, He has the power to carry His church home. Y'all, let me just say, the devil is not going to destroy the church. Yeah, the building may burn, the winds may blow the building down, but it's not going to destroy the church. Fire couldn't burn it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's still not going to burn. Wind can't blow it away, can't wash it away. The old building may fall down, but you can't do away with the church. The people will not be destroyed. The church is not going down, the church is going up. I know that the church of our day is experiencing a, a great falling away. We are living in the Laodicean age of Revelation 3, 14 through 22. You get time to read that. We are rich and increased with goods and we have need of nothing, we think. People don't want to go to church. They don't, don't want to reach the lost. They don't, they don't want to clothe the poor or feed the hungry. They don't want to be a teacher or a preacher. They, won't, they, they don't want people to look at them to, uh, for them to be an example. Jesus said in Revelation 3 and 17, they're wretched, they're miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Without God, they are. Amen. They're so blind. Matthew Henry said in his commentary that they can't see that their righteousness is nothing but filthy rags to God. God has increased them and blessed them, and yet they don't want to do nothing for Him. They don't want to serve Him in any way. And really, when you think about it, Jesus put His disciples on the boat for one thing and for one reason. To go into the storm and the wind to give them a lesson in faith and to know who He really was and who they really are. Amen. The disciples were blind to the power of God. Yeah, if you think about it, how could they be blind to the power of God? When they had already seen God perform miracle after miracle. You know, do you understand there, there are so many people who profess to know Him, who profess to be Christians, but they really don't know who He is or what He is all about? I think verses 45 through 51 have something to teach the blind. The disciples are out on this raging sea, terrified and fearing for their lives. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up and demonstrates his great power over nature. The boat is being tossed up and down. The wind is blowing so strong. And Jesus comes walking calmly on the water. Wow. Wow. And when they call out to him, he comes over to the boat. And the Bible says, the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed. Now why would they be amazed when they had just seen Jesus feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish? Why would they be amazed when they had seen Jesus cast out devils? Why would they be so amazed when they had seen him heal all kinds of diseases? They had even seen him raise the dead. And yet they still doubted his power when he just walked on the water and just calmed the sea. And he calmed the wind, the Bible says. 
So Jesus just sends them to school and shows them his power. And you know what they said? Wow. We're amazed. How could they be amazed when they had seen them? They didn't know that he had the power over nature. Jesus is showing them, you, you see some great things, yeah. But don't you put me in a box and say, yeah, you can do this and you can do that. And you. But the common nature, common a storm. Yeah, let me, we do the same thing. That we put God in a box and we say, you've got to do it this way. Because it ain't ever been done no different than this right here. Let's not be too hard on the disciples, y'all, because we're just as bad as they were. We've all seen God move. We've seen Him heal. We've seen Him provide. We've seen Him save the hard cow sinner. Uh, we've seen Him move mountains out of our way. He has, he has all power, and we've seen that time and time again, and we still have a hard time trusting Him when the wind blows. We have a hard time trusting Him when we just get a real natural storm. Come on. Y'all, I know you can raise the dead and all that, but here I am. It's thundering and it's lightning and I'm afraid of the storm. The wind's blowing. Guess what, y'all? He don't keep sending us to school because we ain't learned to trust him yet. He don't keep sending us to school until we get it. Amen? He did it for his disciples. He did it for Israel. All the trials they faced, it was just school. Amen? Egypt, uh, sending them to Egypt and, and making, making them make brick and, and then going through the killing of all the male babies and the plagues and then rolling the Red Sea back and the bitter waters and the hunger and thirst. They were just going to school. And y'all, can I say that in our own lives it's the same way. God has just been sending us to school day after day, week after week, month after month, storm after storm, and we've seen God move, and yet we don't trust Him fully and completely. Y'all, I'll tell you this. The longer it takes us to learn, the more the wind's going to blow. Somebody said, but Lord, I've been learning so long. <laughs> I've been learning so long. I, Lord, I already trust you. Maybe you want to expand your faith. Uh, sometimes we close our minds and our hearts to him. And we're, we're saying, well, I'm, I'm rich and increased with goods. I don't need any more miracles. I've, I've seen everything. Lord, I've, I've seen the dead raised and I, I've seen people get out of the wheelchairs and walk across. I've, I've seen God do it. Lord, I'm just, you know. Sometimes God just says, okay, I'm going to put you in a storm because I want to stretch your faith. I want you to see some things you hadn't seen. Just when we think we've got all the knowledge about God, he shows up in a different way, doesn't he? The disciples thought they had seen it all, but Jesus shows them something new because the Bible says that when he stepped into the boat, immediately they were on the other side. Huh? Immediately they were on the other side. And Jesus shows them something different. He shows them something new in Mark 6, 56. Jesus was going to stretch their faith even further than they had been stretched by this particular storm. How many of y'all know that we have this Bible and we, we have a certain order for the Bible. But if you read it chronologically, it's not in the same order. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at Mark 6, 56. It talks about when the ship, well, let's go back to 54. And then when they were come out of the ship straightway, they knew him. And ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or countries, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Jesus was showing them, I, I, I want to show you something different that you had never seen before. I want to show you that I can heal 
if people would just touch the hem of my garment. Oh, that's nothing, Brother Grace. We know in Matthew that there was a woman with an issue of blood that came and touched Jesus' hem of his garment, and she was made whole. Yeah, but y'all, in chronological order, Mark is the first book of the New Testament. Huh? Where did she get that? Matthew 2nd. Where did she get that in Matthew? She said, I'm good. Before she said, if they can touch the hem of his garment, I know I can touch the hem of his garment and be made whole. Jesus said, I want you disciples, I want and y'all done been through a storm and you've already seen that I can move on nature like you've never seen before. But I want to expand your faith just a little bit more. I want you to see that people can be healed if they just have enough faith to touch the hem of my garment. I want to send y'all to school a little bit more. You've seen all the miracles. You've seen healing. You've seen demons run out. You've seen all this. But I want to send you to school. There's going to be some wind times in your life. But through those stormy times, when the wind comes, you're going to learn some things if you'll just hold on to me and listen. Y'all want to tell you, there's going to be times when the wind blows, but there's also going to be times when the wind stops. This particular time, the wind wasn't even blowing, was it? Yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was the wind of the Holy Ghost causing them to bring all those sick folks to Jesus, and they just touched the hem of His garment, and they were made whole. But I wonder what the disciples thought about that. Wow! Wow! We thought we'd seen it all, and we do too sometimes, don't we? Y'all, I tell you what I want. I want to see God do greater things than we have ever imagined. But guess how it comes? The wind's got to blow. We've got to go to school. We've got to learn some things through school. Hmm. Well, I just, I just come out of one storm. Now I'm going right into the other. I wonder if God's back there. Just kind of nudging us along. Now, hurry along now. I've got something for you. I don't know if you're just, just get along now. Hurry up, get to school. I've got things planned at home. I've got things I'm doing. But all the time, he never leaves us by ourselves. But he's always praying for us. And he's always noticing us. And he always notices our faith, how we, our faith is or how much faith we have. God is preparing all these things just for us. And just he prepares just the right amount of wind, just the right amount of storm. He knows how much we can take before we break. Amen. God knows that. We all, we all say it, don't we? I don't know. Stand, y'all. My time's up. I don't know how much more I can take. God does. I can't take much more. He knows that. Hmm. And guess what? Just about the time you can't take no more, he comes walking, gets on the boat with you, and all of a sudden everything is just calm. Because he's wanting to show you some great things about him and his power and whatever he's able to do. Y'all, at some point the wind will stop. At some point school lets out. It may be just for today. Everybody do this. Whew! Made it through another day. The winds quit blowing. Time to go home and get some rest. The storm may start again tomorrow. A different storm. School's going to take back up. Session. School's going to be in session tomorrow. But learn that our God will never leave you or forsake you. He's watching you. He's praying for you. He wants you to succeed. Amen. At some point, the wind will stop and you will be victorious. You will have victory in your life. God says you're going to have victory. You will get through it. You will make it. Amen. And you learn from all those storms that you go through. You, work, you learn from those wind things. That every time the wind blows in your life, you are learning something that God wants you to learn. God bless you. Thank you.
for being in the service tonight. Bring somebody to church with you Sunday. Let's have a great time around here. 11 o'clock. Praise God. I can't wait to see what God is going to do for us. Let's have a good time in His presence. You're